All right, well, uh, thanks, Jason. Uh, thanks for inviting me. And uh, it's really a uh, pleasure and an honor to be here in uh, sort of the middle of a, a really great uh, set of speakers. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, a year in the life of uh, my gut microbiome. For, so for those of you uh, who are not familiar with the microbiome, the microbiome, uh, if we think of the human body as an ecosystem, this is a set of all the microorganisms that are living in and on our bodies. Uh, in particular, I'm going to talk mostly about uh, my gut microbiome. Uh, and uh, uh, some of you have heard this interesting statistic. There's 10 times as many bacterial cells living in and on the human body uh, as there are human cells. Okay? And actually, most of them are, are in the gut. So uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to set out uh, and really understand how the day-to-day the -day, uh, lifestyle choices that we make and dietary choices that we make affect this complex ecosystem of organisms uh, living in our bodies. Uh, so uh, an excellent graduate student of mine uh, who's currently a junior fellow at Harvard, uh, Lawrence David, uh, and myself decided that, uh, you know, there were uh, actually hundreds of different things we would want to track. We would want to, uh, you know, enroll a few patients, um, track every morsel of food they eat. We wanted to know, you know, when they got up in the morning, when they went to sleep, uh, if they exercised, we wanted to know in real time if their mood changed, okay? We wanted to have all of this information uh, sort of constantly recorded over the course of a year. Uh, and in addition, uh, we wanted to know every time they went to the bathroom and, and we wanted a sample, okay? Um, uh, and we wanted this, you know, basically every day for a year. Um, surprisingly, nobody signed up for the study, okay? <laughs> so. Um, we ended up with a, a young assistant professor and his graduate student as sort of the only uh, two participants. Um, and you can see here, uh, uh, whoops, uh, here's a, a basically an iPhone app that my student customized uh, to sort of store all of this information. So you can see, yes, uh, there's an app for that, right? Um, so uh, here's sort of a, a day in the life. This is actually the average day uh, uh, that, uh, you know, my graduate student spent on the study. Uh, and you can see it sort of uh, all the hours of the day mapped into the various different activities, uh, you know, uh, research, sleep, uh, something uh, really uh, unknown between 12 and, and 2 o'clock every day. I still haven't figured out what that is. Um, uh, but you can actually see that uh, recording. So just typing information into this iPhone actually uh, took up a significant uh, uh, amount of the time. Um, <clears throat> And then on, on the left, you can just see, you know, an example of some of the, uh, some of the data that, that we uh, uh, recorded. Um, actually, one of the best, uh, if you look at my, you know, body weight over, over the year, I, you know, I'll tell you right now, one of the best uh, uh, ways to lose weight is just to have to write down everything you eat and all the exercise you do and, and know that, you know, you're going to be showing it to hundreds of people uh, a year later. Okay, so... Um, this is my uh, gut microbiome in 2009 on the top. On the bottom is my students. And uh, the one thing I want you to uh, take away when you look at this is uh, you could take any day from these two series and you would know exactly which person it came from because they're so distinct. But day to day, there's variation. But that variation uh, is sort of like variation in a measurement. It doesn't really uh, change much uh, from the first day to uh, you know, a year later. Uh, the, the amount of variation between those two time points is maybe only slightly higher than, you know, between one day and the next. So uh, what we found is that uh, the human microbiome is, is actually very, very stable. Um, so w which of the factors that, uh, uh, you know, we took all this time to measure actually uh, mattered? So um, it turns out that uh, some dietary factors did matter, many fewer than we expected. So the, the biggest signal was for fiber. So uh, the fiber you ate yesterday affects the, uh, you know, uh, basically the, the, this cluster of three different bacteria, uh, how much is in your gut uh, today, okay? But actually, all together, these bacteria comprise a very small portion of the microbiome, so uh, they really don't explain a whole lot of the day-to-day uh, -day variation that we see, uh, but you can detect the signal. Um, this is a different view. So on the x-axis, you'll see time over the course of a year. On the y-axis, you see all the different bacterial types. Uh, and what I want you to notice here, uh, so, so this is um, uh, about a third of the way through the study. Uh, my student said, oh, my wife has got this great internship in Bangkok. I'm going to go and hang out with her there. Uh, so, you know, we shipped a little mini fridge over with him so he could store all his samples. Uh, and uh, what you'll notice is that uh, while he spent two months uh, with her in Southeast Asia, 
the red colors here indicate that there's more of a particular bacteria on that day. Blue colors indicate there's less of that bacteria on that day. Almost as soon as he gets off the plane, a whole bunch of his bacteria basically go away, okay, and they're replaced with the red ones on top, which is basically a cocktail of three pretty nasty enteric pathogens. But at the same time, as soon as he gets off the plane back to the U.S., uh, the pathogens are gone and his microbiome is back to normal, okay? Contrast that with my microbiome over the course of a year, about two-thirds of the way through, I went out to a restaurant and had some quote-unquote special French toast, uh, <laughs> at which point, uh, you know, uh, I, I immediately succumbed to food poisoning, okay? I went to my doctor. I said, I've got, I have got food poisoning. He said, no, it's just a virus, you know? Uh, so, doc, I've got DNA evidence here. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it was indeed a, a salmonella infection, but what you'll notice is that uh, up at the top, you see all the blue colors. Those are the bacteria that went away. And this time, most of the ones that went away when I got food poisoning didn't come back afterwards. They got replaced by that, that cluster of red underneath. So my microbiome got basically recolonized by whatever bacteria uh, happened to be there, you know, within days, okay? And then those, that new microbiome was actually quite stable over time, okay? So, it, you know, it, it, it starts to give us some clues as to what the, what the mechanism of this long-term stability is. Okay, so I'll sort of end with, with a story on uh, uh, kind of tying it into some of the genome sequencing you'll, you'll hear about later. Uh, so this is a, a work done by my wife and Dirk Jeevers over at the Broad. Uh, and she was looking at the, uh, basically developing, mapping reads onto reference genomes to develop a fingerprint of different bacteria in the gut. And what she found is, all of the different uh, people that she looked at who had enrolled in the Human Microbiome Project, when she looked at one particular uh, strain of Bacteroides, each strain have, had a different fingerprint, okay? So they're all a little bit different. But what was more remarkable is that when those people came back for a repeat visit, either, you know, a month or up to a year later, they had exactly the same strain. So it's not only the same type of ecosystem uh, that's associated with us uh, uh, uniquely as, as individuals, it's actually the exact strain. So uh, it's kind of exciting to me to, to, to hear about uh, all the new sequencing technologies and things like that. We might want to think about getting uh, the, the uh, genomes of our unique strains in addition to our own personal genomes as, as we kind of move forward. So I'll uh, uh, end there.